Without his mark, Giyu is quickly overwhelmed by Akaza's attacks and is brought down. The demon turns to Tanjiro with the intent to kill, but the Hashira yells at the demon that he is still alive, and if he wants to get to Tanjiro, he must defeat him first. A voice rings in Akaza, telling him that indomitable wills won't ever break in any hardship, and that while they are not samurai who carry a sword, they carry swords in their heart and use their fists. Akaza disregards the voice as a nuisance and attempts to confront Giyu, but he is held back by a young woman who tearfully tells him, him, Hakuji, that's enough. The woman urges Akaza to stop and holds onto his hand, who demands she let go and asks who she is. She begs him to leave, but the demon wishes to kill Gyu and Tanjiro. When asked why he wants to kill them, he answers that he must become stronger, and when the woman asks why he must, Akaza responds, because, if I'm not strong, I can't bring it back. Medicine for my father. As his life flashes before his eyes, he remembers he wanted to get stronger so that he could steal money, fight back against his victims when they retaliate, and endure beatings at the magistrate's office when he is caught. Tied up and bloody from his lashings, Akaza, then known as Hakuji, is presented before the magistrate, who warns him after getting tattooed for his crimes, the next punishment is losing a hand. Hakuji laughs and dismisses the threat, claiming that without hands, he can still use his feet, vowing to never get caught again. The magistrate reminds him even at the age of 11, he is already a repeat offender and endures beatings severe enough to make a grown man faint, calling him a demon child. After leaving the office, Hakuji laughs off being insulted as a demon child and claims he was born with teeth. Suddenly, a man informs him that his father had hung himself upon learning he was caught. At the cemetery, holding a letter from him in his hand, he finds his father's headstone. The letter he wrote to him reads, Dear Hakuji, live a righteous life. You can still change. I didn't want to live if it meant stealing from people. I am sorry sorry for troubling you. Clutching his headstone, Hakuji mourns his father, angrily asking if the poor were even allowed to live and cursing the world for his death. Hurt and enraged, Hakuji walked into a town and started a brawl, brutally beating several men as they tried to fight back against him, all while denouncing them for being alive as his father dies. He yells out that he wasn't a bother who needed to apologize for anything, and for his sake, he could take any punishment they give him no matter the severity. His father's condition had begun to worsen, but he was sure he could save him, yet he chose to hang himself and die, a choice he was prepared to make himself and do for him. As his victims lay unconscious and Hakuji takes time to breathe, a martial artist offers him a slow clap and commends his skill. He notes he had been summoned with the news that a child was about to be killed, only to instead see that said child has knocked seven grown men unconscious. The man tells Hakuji he has promise and is impressed by his skill to fight barehanded. Akaza wonders who he is as he realizes he is seeing his memories. When the man asks if he could come to his dojo since he has no students, Hakuji angrily dismisses his offer and threatens to kill him. He notes that he has tattoos branding him as a criminal from Edo, meaning he was banished and came here, but Hakuji pays no heed and claims it has nothing to do with him. The man tells him it is time he is reborn and takes a fighting stance. Hakuji lunges at him with all his rage, but the man throws numerous rapid punches at the boy, knocking him unconscious. When he regains consciousness, the man is amazed at his toughness despite the severe beating he received, only waking up after an hour. He introduces himself as Keizo, a martial teacher at a dojo that teaches the Soryu style, though he earns a living through odd jobs due to having no students. As Hakuji follows behind him, Keizo explains his new job is to nurse his sick daughter whilst he is away. His wife grew tired of having to care for her and drowned herself, and burdened by her death, he became weak-willed. Hakuji questions if Keizo would want a criminal to care for his daughter, but Keizo notes that since he had defeated him. It is okay with him now. It is then that Akaza realizes the reason he dislikes Tanjiro is because he reminds him of Keizo, a figment of his worthless life story. Keizo introduces him to his daughter Kayuki, and her condition reminds Hakuji of his father's own illness. He asks if she is feeling better than before and introduces her to the boy behind him, who refuses to give his name. Keizo asks that she get it before he comes back and leaves to go to work. Alone with Hakuji, Kayuki asks if he is okay. Seeing his injuries, Akaza remarks that his worthless life was nothing but lies. Hakuji questions why the ill are always apologizing, whether it's because they inconvenience others, coughing loudly, or their inability to work. They want to do things themselves but cannot, and despite their suffering, they insist they are to blame. While helping Kayuki, she apologizes to Hakuji because he is unable to train or have fun with her. Her condition had worsened, leading to him spending all night changing her bedding and towels, even giving her water and helping her relieve herself. Hakuji did not mind. He had helped his father with his illness, and he had superior endurance to most people and was not bothered. He tells Koyuki he spends his time training anyway and does not mind not being out. She insists that he must leave her sometimes, having heard that there would be fireworks tonight and believing he must go. He responds he can simply carry her and they can go see them together. She becomes confused, and he explains that even if she can't go today, 
They will be on each year, and she can go see them then. Upon hearing this, Koyuki begins to cry. Dismayed, Hakuji notes it is the one thing he didn't like about nursing her, believing that being sick and bedridden was making her sad, something he didn't enjoy. While taking a drink with Keizo, the master notes that the kanji for haku in Hakuji is the same as koma in komainu, believing that both of them must protect something like a komainu protecting its shrine, a fact that makes Keizo laugh. Hakuji recounts how he came to own the dojo. Though he wasn't a samurai, Keizo owned the land because he had saved the owner from bandits. The man was impressed with his soryu style, and due to not having an heir, he gave Keizo his land and dojo. However, others who wanted the land were displeased Keizo came to take ownership. A neighboring Kenjutsu dojo began to harass the Soryu dojo, leading Keizo to have difficulty finding students. Despite this, lessons with him and helping Koyuki healed Hakuji's heart. Years later, Hakuji is now 18 and Koyuki is 16. No longer sick, she was bright, cheery, and eager to help in the dojo, happy to live normally. One day, Keizo calls Hakuji over to speak with him. In the main room, he asks if Hakuji would like to be his successor to the dojo, adding that Koyuki likes him, rendering both teens speechless. Having been branded a criminal, he could have never imagined himself with a future, let alone one where someone likes him. He realizes he is now able to live a righteous life as his father had asked him, giving him the hope that he could start anew. Hakuji bowed in gratitude to Keizo, Recalling at that moment, he would give his life to Koyuki and Keizo, and as such, he could have never imagined them poisoned to death. Hakuji went to his father's grave to tell him he would be getting married, but while returning, he saw people at the front of the dojo, giving him a terrible, nauseous feeling. Someone sadly tells him that the well they drank from was poisoned, because the assailant couldn't beat him or Keizo in a battle. Inside the dojo, Hakuji saw the bodies of Koyuki and Keizo, their faces covered and blood all over their clothes. He lamented that once more a crisis has happened, and he wasn't there to save the people he loved, even when he promised. Previously, while watching a display of fireworks, Koyuki asked him if he had remembered when they both talked about seeing them, to which he vaguely recalls. She tells him that even such a minor conversation made her happy, because even when she couldn't see them then, he had told her she could see them next year. Koyuki couldn't imagine living another year. Her mother felt the same way, not wanting to see her die which she believes is the reason she killed herself. She knew that even her father had given up on her because she was so weak. Despite it, she remarks when he told her about the coming years, it was as if Hakuji could see her future and stated it as a matter of fact. She asks if he would be her husband, holding his hand. Hakuji holds hers and says yes, promising to become stronger than anyone else and protect her for life. Akaza bitterly remarks that in the end, he never lived up to his promise. Records at the magistrate's office recount details of a gruesome massacre. Enraged at losing the people he loved once again, Hakuji attacked the neighboring dojo and killed 67 of its members with his bare hands. The dojo was strewn with smashed heads, crushed organs, and bodies mangled beyond recognition. A hellish scene with jaws, eyeballs, brains, and limbs scattered along the walls and ceiling. The maid who witnessed the massacre lost her mind, and 30 years later, the records were destroyed because it was so unbelievable. It was thought to be fictional. Dripping with blood and dazed and exhausted, Hakuji walked mindlessly until he came to a footbridge. The man on it, Muzan Kibutsuji, remarks about hearing of the dojo's massacre, as he didn't recall sending a demon to the town disappointed to know it was a human who committed the murders. Hakuji threatens to kill the stranger when he suddenly lunges and impales his head with his hand. Planning to create a group of twelve powerful demons, he asks Hakuji if he could withstand the blood he will receive. The mentally shattered Hakuji only replies that he did not care anymore. As a demon now going by the name Akaza, Hakuji had lost his memories but was still drawn to seeking greater strength, even when he had nothing he wanted to protect. He didn't want to live in a world without his family and for over the next century, he would go on to commit countless acts of pointless violence, denouncing his entire life as a horribly sad, laughable, and ridiculous story. As Akaza laments he cannot go to heaven like his father, Keizo and Koyuki, 